their presence. They're always yearning. Let's get uh, see more of each other. Let's get together. Let's, uh, we're completely entangled. And then you see, you've actually a, a kind of a, what I would call spiritual element has been introduced. Falling in love is uh, a thing that strikes like lightning and is therefore extremely analogous to the mystical vision. We don't know how really people attain the mystical vision. But as yet we are not clear as to why it comes about. And if there is any method of attaining it, the best one is probably to give up the whole idea of getting it. Uh, but you see, it is completely unpredictable. And so it is in that way, like falling in love, capricious, and therefore crazy. But if you should be so fortunate as to encounter either of these experiences, it seems to me to be a total denial of life to refuse it. Well now really when we go back then to falling in love and say it's crazy. as a matter of fact to extremely fundamental things that there is always a curious tie in some between the fall and the creation taking this ghastly risk uh, is the condition of their being life See, for all, the life is an, an act of faith and an act of gamble. He, the moment you take a step, you do so on an act of faith because you don't really know that the floor is not going to give under your feet. The moment you take a journey, what an act of faith. The moment you enter into any kind of human undertaking in relationship, what an act of faith. See, you've given yourself up. But this is the most powerful thing that can be done. Surrender. See, and love is an act of surrender to another person. Total abandonment. I give myself to you. Take me. Do anything you like with me. See? So... <laughs> That's quite mad, because you see, it's letting things get out of control. All sensible people keep things in control. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Security, vigilance, watch it. Police, watch it. Guards, watch it. Who's gonna watch the guards? <laughs> so, uh, actually, therefore, the, the, the course of wisdom, what is really sensible, uh, is to let go, uh, is to let oneself, to give oneself up, and that's quite mad. So we come straight
Egyptian sun dancing like crazy to the retrieved rhythms of desire fading into memory. Therefore, we are the last poets of the world, said David Nelson, Guylan Kane, Felipe Luciano, Umar bin Hassan, Jalal Nur Din, Suleiman El Hadi, Abiodun Oye Wole, and the heartbeat, Elijah Obabi. The last poets were born on May 19th, 1968 in Mount Mars Park in Harlem, New York. It was a birthday celebration in memory, in honor of Malcolm X. The last poets were on a mission. We became the voices of the east wind, blowing away the west with our sound. The last poets, men who knew in their youth the truth must be told, the lies must be revealed, and we got to be sassy and funky and sincere about it. The last poets, individuals who don't flock together well, who don't follow orders too much, and and when we do, there's a reason. When we infiltrate the madness, it's not for love. Our lives are mirrors of the world our people have lived and died in for 400 years. We, the last poets, are the seeds for the rap artists to grow a garden. And yet, we are only a branch from the tree called Rio. Crossings is the road we've traveled to come to this point. The last poets have become a fraternity of those who know the mystery of a moon glow and the wrath of each flame of the sun. The last poets are back, and that's a fact. No more time for bullshit. Raps. Let's get back on
Realization. 